Hello, Math Humans. We're going to do 7.1b today. We're going to be talking about applications of solving systems of equations. Specifically, our objectives are that we're going to solve systems that involve a break-even analysis. So before we kind of talk about this break-even process analysis, let's talk about a break-even point. So here's the way this process works. So if I'm going to have a profit from making something or selling something, that is when my revenue is going to be greater than however much it costs me to produce that item. And then my profit is going to equal revenue minus cost. So if we thought about this graphically, I think it helps to explain the situation. So let's say I am going to make something to sell, and this is going to be my cost. Notice that it has a big white intercept because that is usually how much it costs to start producing something. And then I have a slope, which would be the individual cost of making each item. And then I might have another line, which is going to be my revenue. The y-intercept on that is usually zero, because when I've made nothing, I make nothing. So this is going to be my revenue. So this point right here, I'll circle it, is called the break-even point. So if you'll notice, to the left of that point, cost is bigger than revenue. So that means that it's more expensive than the money that I'm making. On the other side of the break-even point, notice that now the revenue exceeds the cost, which means I'm making money. Alrighty. So oftentimes we want to find this point. It's called the break-even point. Oftentimes it's used to figure out how many items I need to sell so that I can realize a profit. Sometimes you will use a break-even plan when I want to do something like choose between cell phone plans. One cell phone plan might have a high upfront cost and low charges for minutes or data. The other cell phone plan might have zero upfront cost but have a very steep cost for data or minutes, and I have to decide where those two plans break even, and then which one is going to be better for me in the long run. So for the first example, I've gone ahead and written down the problem. Alrighty. So this example says a shoe company is going to invest $300,000 in equipment to produce a new line of athletic footwear. Each pair of shoes costs $5 to produce and is sold for $60. How many pairs of shoes must be sold for the company to break even? And then when will the company realize a profit? All right, so a couple of things that are important to notice. I'm going to invest $300,000, so that is a cost, and it costs $5 to produce. So if I wrote my cost function, it would have a y-intercept of $300,000, and it's going to cost me $5 to produce every pair of shoes. My revenue is going to equal $60 for every pair of shoes that I sell. So then we could do this in our grapher, but the problem with these in your grapher is it kind of messes up the window. Because if you'll notice, the y-intercept on this guy is 300,000. And then the slope on the second equation is 60. So that means that the window can sometimes be hard to find. So I would recommend that you just do the math. So I want to know, the first question is, how many pairs of shoes to break even? So for the break even point, that is going to be where the cost is equal to the revenue. So I'm going to set the two equations equal and I'm going to solve. So I have 60x is going to equal 300,000 plus 5x. I'm going to get 55x is 300,000. And then if I divide, 
x is going to equal the 300,000 divided by 55, and that's going to give me 5454.545. Now, if x represent the number of shoes that I'm going to make, it's really weird to make 0.545 of a shoe. So I'm going to round up and say that x is equal to 5455 shoes for the break-even point. Okay, so my costs and my revenue are going to be equal at that point. The second question says, when will the company realize a profit? So remember, if this is, sorry, my words are sliding out of the way. If this is my break-even point, I'm going to realize a profit after that. So the profit is going to occur when I sell more than 5,455 shoes. So you always want to make sure that you're really careful how you answer your questions. Alrighty, that's it for the first example. Second example, similar situation. A small fast food company is going to invest $10,000 to produce a new food item that will sell for $3.99. Each item can be produced for $1.90. Find the cost and revenue models. How many items must be sold to break even? This one says how many items must be sold to make a profit of $12,000. So we're going to start this process exactly the same. So let's talk about the $10,000 is a cost, and it costs me $1.90, so there is a cost. So my cost model is going to equal my initial outlay of cash plus however much it costs me to make a food item. And X is going to equal a food item, whatever that might happen to be. Alrighty, and then my revenue, how I make money, is going to equal 3.99 times X. So the first question said, find your cost and revenue models. Here they are. The second question says, how many to break even? So remember for my break even point, that is when the revenue is equal to the cost. So I'm going to set up that situation. So I'm going to say 3.99x is equal to the $10,000 plus the 1.90x. When I combine like terms, I get 2.09x is 10,000. X is 10,000 divided by 2.09. And when I do that math, I get 4784.689. And remember, it says how many items must be sold to break even. That's kind of weird, 0.689 of a food item. And so I would say that the break even is going to happen when X is equal to 4785 shoes. Okay, and I'll put a, that kind of arrow there. The second question said, I need a profit of $12,000. So remember that profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So my profit is going to equal my revenue, 3.99x, minus the cost, which is 10,000 plus 1.90x. So my profit is 3.99x minus 10,000 minus 1.90x. So when I combine like terms, profit is 2.09x minus 10,000. And I want my profit to equal 12,000. Okay, I'm going to move my paper up just a sec. I'm going to get rid of my little piece of paper. So there's the $12,000. So now I just need to solve this equation. 10,000 plus 12,000 is 22,000. And that's going to equal 2.09x. So X is the 22 divided by the 2.09, and this, I think, is a funny number, 10526.316. Remember, 0.316 of a food item would be kind of gross, so I'm going to round up. 10527. So for a profit of $12,000, 
I have to sell 10,527 food items. And I just caught my mistake up here. That's not shoes. That is food items. Whew. Alrighty. So it becomes really interesting when you do a break-even analysis because that helps you to realize exactly how many products you have to sell to realize a specific type of profit. All right, my dears, that is it for today. I will see you soon.